We got a Honda in the shop with a complaint of overheating. Let's check it out, see if we can't figure out what's going on. This is what we're working on today. A 2004 Honda Accord EX. This has a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. And talking to the owner, apparently they were driving around doing some errands and things like that. So stop and go traffic and I think they were idling for a little while. And then they looked over and they saw that their gauge was going over to the H, um, the temperature gauge. And so they pulled over and um, shut the vehicle off. And they called me and they, they were like, hey, it went all, all the way over to the H. What do I do? And I was like, well, of course, don't drive it. We don't want to drive it while it's all the way hot because these uh, Honda engines are very sensitive to that type of stuff. So I asked them to get out, pop the hood, look at the coolant, not open it or anything. Just look at it and see if there's coolant spilling out everywhere or anything like that and they said no and then I asked them to just um, turn on the AC and look and see if both fans were coming on and they did that and they said only one fan was coming on so I think that gives us some direction of what's going on all right even though we have a little bit of direction with one of our fans apparently not working I don't like to get focused too much on certain things without looking at the vehicle myself so we'll keep it simple first thing we'll do is we'll do a visual inspection we just want to look at all of our components, see if we see any obvious leaks or problems. You know, we especially want to look at our hoses, look at the lower hose down there, look at our radiator and the shroud, you know, make sure everything looks like it's in good working order, hasn't got hit by something uh, hard for you to see. We want to look down there right at the front of this radiator and make sure we don't have something stuck on there or some damage that's in there. Now we do have a condenser in the front there so you can't quite look in the front. We got to look right in between here because this is our radiator right here. Um, but that looks good. There might be a little bit of trash down in there but it's not bad. Uh, we can look at our coolant reservoir level. It's right at the minimum, actually a little bit above the minimum. I'd like to see it a little bit higher, but that's not too bad. And we can check our coolant level. And our coolant level appears to be right to the top. So I don't think it's a coolant loss issue that's causing our overheating. We'll continue with our inspection. We definitely want to look at the... Let me get a light. Look at our water pump down there. I don't know, can you even see? Anyway, right, let's see. Right there with all the holes around that sprocket or pulley, that's where our water pump is. So we want to look around there for any evidence of it leaking. Now, water pumps on these Hondas, it's common for them to just have a drip or two weeping out from the bottom. There's a little tube that'll leak out. That's perfectly normal. But what we don't want to see is a huge trail of uh, coolant we shouldn't be smelling coolant down there, at least not a lot of it. Usually when they're leaking, you can smell coolant big time. And usually you can see a trail or a puddle right underneath. But I'm not seeing any evidence of any leaks like that, so I think we'll, we'll focus on our fan for now. And I should mention, we want to make sure our drive belt is good too, because the water pump is driven by this belt. But typically, if that belt goes, you're going to have other problems, like a loss of power steering, you're going to lose your alternator, so you're going to probably have the battery light come on. So there definitely will probably be more issues than overheating if that drive belt goes. And like I said, we do want to be checking in front of the radiator to make sure there's no blockages. We also do want to check this AC condenser too. And make sure we don't have any blockages here. And I see a few bent fins and some bugs and stuff, but... All in all, it looks fine, because if the airflow stops here, it's not going to go through that and get to our radiator to help us cool. So we definitely got to check both. And I do want to mention that this vehicle is stone cold. I don't recommend opening that radiator cap while the engine's hot. You will get burned. So I just wanted to show you on the FLIR here, this engine is cold. Okay, real quick, why do we not want to take these caps off when it's hot, besides all these warnings here? Well, basically, our cooling system operates under pressure, and the cap is what keeps the system pressurized. Um, the reason we pressurize it is to raise that boiling point of the coolant, so it doesn't boil off as fast. So when you remove this cap, you've now introduced atmospheric air to our pressurized coolant, and the reaction is going to cause that coolant to come out fast. Faster than you're probably going to be expecting it, and um, some of it is probably going to boil off as soon as it hits the atmospheric air, the atmospheric pressure I should say 
and it's going to scald whatever's near it, your hands, your face, and any other body parts. So I highly recommend don't take these caps off when it's hot, wait till it's cool. All right, now let's check out our cooling fans. Typically, the larger fan over here is going to be our radiator cooling fan. The smaller fan over there is going to be our AC condenser fan. Some models, the fans are the same, but a lot of Hondas, that's the typical setup, is the radiator cooling fan is here, and the AC condenser fan is over there, and that AC condenser fan is usually a little bit smaller. But they definitely need to both be operating properly in order to help keep these vehicles cool, especially when we're idling or driving in stop and go traffic, things like that. That's really where it's going to show up um, as far as having an issue with these fans. When you're stop and go traffic or idling and you see it going hot or possibly your AC is not working very well, that's usually an indication we got a problem with our fans. Now I'll show you on a wiring diagram in here in a second how these work, but on a lot of Hondas both fans work together so whenever they get switched on they both come on and then they both go off and that's how this uh, system works on this vehicle they're both going to come on at the same time they're both going to come off at the same time there are other ways to control them but that's how this one works so let's go do a simple check to see if they're both coming on all right quick simple check we can do on those fans we got the key in the on position but the engine is off We'll just go over here to our AC. We'll turn it on. We'll make sure our AC is activated. You can see that the I heard the fans come on, or at least one of them. We come out here and look, and it looks like that one is running right there. This one is not, so that's a problem right there. So let's go look at a wiring diagram and see what we're working with. Because it appears we're having an issue with that cooling fan, I went ahead and printed up a wiring diagram for this 2004. Okay, for orientation, we have our power up here coming in, we have our ground down here, we have all of our components in between. In order to have a component work, an electrical component, we need power and we need ground. And uh, just going over things, here is our under hood fuse box, this thing right here. Right here is our under dash fuse box, much smaller. We have our engine control module, we have our two fans, the AC condenser fan, the radiator fan. This is the fan switch, and then these are our relays, and these are our fuses. Now, there are two ways to activate these fans, and both of them involve these relays. So one way is our radiator fan switch. When it gets above 196, roughly 200 degrees, give or take a few, this switch closes and it provides a ground. Or, the engine control module right here, or engine computer, can also provide a ground to this side of our relay. So even though it doesn't show that there's a ground right here, there should actually be, if they wanted to really make this true and correct, there would be a ground symbol right there. And so what that is doing is it's grounding it just the same as this does. And so if we follow our power, we got power coming in on this 7.5 amp fuse coming to this leg of the relay, or this side of the relay, I should say, and then also splits and comes over here. And then these squiggly lines right there, that's a coil of wire. And anytime we put power to a coil of wire with a ground, and in this case when the switch closes or the ECM grounds it, we have a ground and we have a power on each side, that coil of wire is going to create a magnetic field. And these switches right here are made of metal, and so when, when this magnetic field energizes, the switch goes, hey, I want to close, and that's what it does due to magnetism. And when it closes, now we have power coming in on fuse 11 and fuse 9. These are both 20 amp and they come in like that. So when the switch closes, we now have provided power to each one of our fans. And then all we need is a ground. In this case, G201 and G301 provide the ground. And that's how the system works. Now when we did our key on engine off test by turning on the AC, we figured out a few things, whether we knew it or not. Um, right here, this is where, when we turn that key, we're providing power to this fuse 30 in our under dash fuse box. And so this is going to provide power coming down here, and then it splits and comes over here. So it powers up both of our relays, at least the control side. We have the control side that's controlling it, and then we have the more heavier duty side, which actually carries the load. So this is our load side. So you got to remember, which side are we looking at on a relay? Are we looking at our control side, or are we looking at the load side that's doing the work? In this case, we've provided power to both of the control sides of the relay. 
And what happened when we energized it? Our AC condenser fan obviously energized because it, it closed and worked. So we know that this fuse is good. We have power here. We know that this relay is good. We know fuse 9 has power and we know there's a good ground G201. So we know that this whole leg is working good. What we don't know is whether we have power on fuse 20. We don't know if our relay works and we don't know if our wiring to the motor here or our wiring to the ground or our ground itself is any good. So those are the things we need to check. There are also a few other things that we know are good when we did our test on the vehicle. We know that our fan controls are good. When we turn the key on and um, press the AC button and turn the blower motor on, we know that our inputs into the climate control unit are good. The inputs would be turning the dial and pressing the AC request button. Those are inputs, those go into the con climate control module. And from there, the climate control module says, hey, we want to turn the AC on, and it sends that signal um, through a communication wire over to our engine control module. Then the engine control module says, okay, I got that signal and then it provides a ground to the side of the relay to turn everything on. So we know that all that is working just by our simple test of turning on uh, the AC. So those are all excellent checks. Now what we don't know, we don't know if our radiator fan switch is working. That's housed in the bottom of the radiator on these older ones and it just once it gets to 200 like I said it just closes and provides a ground. Now we have to basically either pull it out and test it off the car or we have to get the car hot in order to test that. I don't want to do that now and I'm not very concerned with this because our issue seems to be over here. It does not seem to be over here because we were able to control at least one relay with this right here and so I'm not con concerned about this because they work in the same way. They're both providing a ground to the control side on the relay and our control side of the relays do not seem to be the issue at least at this point so we're gonna leave this alone and we're gonna look elsewhere now even though we know fuse 30 and fuse 9 are good on this car I'll go ahead and show you how to check all three with a test light fuses 9 and 11 are gonna be in our under hood fuse box here so we can just squeeze these tabs and take this off and that's where we're gonna be doing our tests if we look under the cover right here it tells us where everything is right there is our 20 amp uh, number 11 cooling fan and over here is our 20 amp number 9 condenser fan and that should be this one this 20 right here and this 20 right here so this should be 11 this should be 9 this is our cooling fan condenser fan all right now we'll just connect our test light this end we're going to connect to battery negative just like that and this now we just need to look for a power and it'll light when we find a power and hopefully you can tell it's lighting right there because we hit power because any for an electrical component to work we need power and we need ground so that's what we need our fan to have in order to work so we'll just check each side of this 20 amp fuse right here that side's good and that side's good and we don't need to turn the key on for this check because these are always hot and those fuses are good now if you live in the rust belt area you may want to actually pull those out and check both legs make sure they haven't uh, corroded off because that can happen these fuses can go bad like that but still look like they're intact up top so if there's an issue like that you'll want to pull them out and check them but those two fuses are good now to check our fuse 30 under here we're gonna have to pull this right here you can pull that off and figure out which one of these is fuse 30 looks like can you tell? Looks like that one right there, fuse 30. Let's go see where it is on here. And that should be this fuse right here all by itself. And to check it, we're going to do the same thing with our test light. And for this one, I just have it grounded right there. And I'll show you. With the key off, it's off right now. We have nothing on each side. And that's the way it's supposed to be. We should have nothing with the key off. Now I'll go turn the key on and we'll check it again. All right, now that the dinger stopped dinging, because that's annoying on a video, we'll just check for power right here, if I can get on it. There you go, we got power on that leg. And 
Come on, and we got power right there. So we're good, this fuse is good. We already knew that, but this is how you check it. All right, now we know fuse 30 is good, fuse 11 is good, fuse 9 is good. Now, of course, from our test before, we know that this relay is good. We don't know if this radiator fan relay is good. Let's go check this out in the underhood fuse box. Okay, looking at our box again, this relay right here, well, that's the symbol for a relay, similar to what we're looking at on our uh, wiring diagram. That's the AC condenser relay, that's what that means. And then over here, this is our relay for the radiator fan. And that is right here. So this is our relay for the radiator fan. This is our relay for the AC condenser fan. Now, there are a couple ways we could do our testing right here. One of the simplest ways is we could just swap our known good relay, swap the positions. Because we know that this relay is good, we don't know about this one, we could swap them. And if our problem moves, we know that our, our issue is right here in a bad relay. We always have to remember though, anytime we touch a component like pull a relay or something, we may inadvertently fix our issue because it could be an issue with the contacts in the box. It may not be the relay itself, it could be somewhere other in, you know some other location right in here and just us moving it around we fixed it it could even be underneath the box so we always have to be cognizant of that now we can also get fancy relay testers and um, test them right here we can test the relays off the car we can also go over to our fan here unplug it use test lights over here so a lot of different ways we can go about um, testing this type of stuff now, as soon as we talked about it, and we're trying to keep this diagnosis kind of simple, minimal tools, we'll go ahead and swap these two relays and see what happens. Now, I'm just going to use a relay puller, try not to damage it. Sometimes these relays can kind of be hard to pull out because there's no room in here. Even with these special pliers, there's still no room. Come on. Ah. Yeah. This is why sometimes I don't try to uh, swap the relays because they can be kind of a bear to get out, especially if they haven't been pulled out in a while. You just got to be careful not to break them. All right, we just got to make sure we put them the right way. All right, let's do our test again. All right, we got the key on. We'll just go ahead and activate that and go check. All right, taking a look. Looks like our problem still exists. This fan, our radiator fan is not working. Our AC condenser fan is working. So the problem is not in the relays themselves. We could still have a problem with the box, but the actual relays appear to be good. Now, I want to try to isolate where the issue is. So I want to figure out, is my issue over here? Or is my issue more over there or somewhere in between? And I, I like to go to the end of the line if I can. And in this case, it's pretty easy. We can get to the connector right there. And we'll do our test right there. We'll see if we're getting power and ground to our connector right here that goes to the fan. And if we don't have it there, then we can start working our way back. Um, but if we have power and ground all the way up to there, then I think we're done. So that's why I like to go to this step. And sometimes I go to this step first rather than do everything else. But I wanted to kind of give you a logical way to look at things, and that's why I did it the way I did today. Okay, I got our connector disconnected. In order to get it off this right here, you just have to pull this tab kind of down towards the front of the car. I know it seems like you want to press it, but that's not the way you pull it back like that and then it'll come off it'll come off this but then it'll still be attached this to this and then in order to separate those this right here you just press that down and then they'll disconnect so right there this is where our power and ground comes up to the fan and so we're gonna put a test light right there and test it now you see those terminals in there we do not want to damage those and spread them apart in fact right now we want to inspect them and make sure that's not already the case and you can see that this connector, I think somebody was already messing with it because it, it's seen better days. But anyway, we want to go ahead and look at our terminals in there and make sure everything's okay. And uh, when we put our test equipment in there, we do not want to spread them because then we'll create an issue that wasn't there. Now when our fan's running, it puts a pretty big load on our electrical system. And smaller test lights might not 
you know, show us if there's an issue. So we're going to use a larger test light. This one pulls about 4 amps. It's an old headlight bulb. Um, we're going to use this one, and this will definitely put a load on our system, and uh, it should indicate whether we have a good power in the ground. All right, I got the test light connected. I just have the leads right inside the connector there. We're not spreading the terminals apart. I'm very careful not to do that. So we'll do our same check inside. We'll turn the key on, activate the AC, and see if it lights our test light. All right, as you can see, it's lit up. So we have good power and good ground all the way up to that point. I think we confirmed we have a bad fan. I'll turn it off and on again so you can see. Well, that confirms our suspicion. We have a bad fan. Or the connector right there is bad, but that's going to be replaced as part of the fan. So I think our testing is done. I definitely like using a heavy-duty test light when it comes to equipment like this, like a fan. We'll plug this back in, and we can do one final check, the old tap test, and see if that wakes our fan up. Now another test we can do is the old tap tests. So what we can do is activate the system just like we've been doing it from inside. And then we can just take something like this screwdriver handle here and just tap on it. Tap, tap, tap. We just got to be careful that the fan could come on. And we don't want to get our screwdriver caught in here or our hands or anything else. So we got to be safe. But in all honesty, we could probably do this test first. We could do the old tap test and bam. If we tap on it, it comes on, we're done. We most likely just need a fan. Now we could do that same test that I just did with the test light right there just to make absolutely sure we got power and ground there. Um, but the old tap test is great to uh, get you to an area or get you to that fix quick. All right, I got a close-up shot there. Hopefully you'll be able to see the fan if it starts moving. Boom, just like that. The tap test, I love it. It's great. But now it's working, but I'm glad we were able to catch it when it wasn't working. Because if it's intermittent, that's really hard to diagnose. Now I'm curious if it'll come back on. Let's test it. Nope, you see it didn't come back on. Not till we tap it. So that's pretty good confirmation. We definitely have a bad fan. A little bit of trivia for you. My very first YouTube video that I did was on this vehicle. I replaced that engine mount right there. And hey, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. And yeah, we're done testing. I'll go ahead and put this back. Well, that's it for this diagnostic video. If you want to see the actual fix for this car, let me know in the comments. And as always, if the video helped you out and you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.